La Rioja is subdivided into three production zones. Rioja Alta, where most of the historical wineries and the best estates are located. Rioja Alavesa, a Rioja Baja, which is located closer to the Pyrenees. It must be known that the tradition in La Rioja is one of small wine growers selling their grapes to the large estates. La Rioja is above all a region of large estates which buy from small producers. This has changed somewhat because nowadays these large estates also own vineyards. They are less dependent on small wine growers as they were traditionally, where small producers sold to the big wineries. On a vu également aux côtés de ces, de ces grandes bodegues qui dominent vraiment le marché de la Rioja, qui exporte le plus comme... Next to these large wineries, which dominate the market and export the most Rioja, such as Riscal, Muga, Cune, Campo Viejo and Tondonia, we have seen the arrival of much smaller wineries that have managed to gain world-renowned reputations. Cune is a traditional family-run estate. All the best estates are situated in the zones of Aro and Logroño. It is a large estate that has always been at the forefront of technology and has always been one of the first to vinify in the most productive way. It produces traditional wines with a very good reputation, such as Cune, of course, and Imperial, which is available as a reservoir and Grand Reservoir wine. As well as Cune, there is also Vina Real and Real de Assu. And Cune has Contino, which is a very small chateau-like estate which produces one of the more well-known wines, Vigna del Contino, one of the most famous wines of this region. We are in a village next to Aro, which is the capital of Rioja Alavesa. La Rioja is composed of three regions, Rioja Alta, Rioja Baja, a Rioja Alavesa. We are in Rioja Alta, where the wines are more Atlantic. Sometimes we say that they are more like those from Bordeaux. On this side we have the river, and on the other side of that is Rioja Alavesa in the Basque country. The Rioja Alavesa is also Atlantic, but with a Mediterranean influence. The wines here have a fruiter, fuller body, more like a burgundy, they say. The Rioja Baja has the largest zone. The grape variety, Tempranillo, is blended with Grenache in a Mediterranean soil in hotter temperatures. In Cune, there are many vineyards, especially in Rioja Alta and Rioja Alavesa. Cune is classified in the category of classic Rioja. Atadi is classified in the category of modern Rioja. Cune tends to be more burgundy by its terroir and Bordeaux by its aging process. Bordelaise pour l'élevage, mais euh, bourguignonne quant à la façon de voir son terroir, parce qu'il il, il est... Why Burgundy? Because they work their wine in a very fragmented way. With the exception of Crianza, which is an aged cuvée wine from different plots, the Pagos Viejos are selected wines from different plots. For Atadi, their grand emblematic wine is the magnificent, internationally renowned Vina El Pisson, 
which has appeared several times on Parker's 100-point rating system. The oenologist is, by the way, French, from Bordeaux, who has been living there for some time. The concept of plots comes from Burgundy. At Atadi, though the prices are still acceptable, the wines are more expensive than the classic Rioja. The soil here has a high concentration of clay and limestone, but there's a small part of the region along the Ebro River that has a quaternary soil rich in alluvial silt. And basically, we have planted in the soil concentrated in clay and limestone, which favors a good growth of the vine, a stable development, and brings forth a certain finesse and elegance to the Spanish Tempranillo grape. In fact, the particularly high content of carbonate calcium and limestone in the soil bestows on our wines a certain touch of elegance, finesse and femininity that's also found in the Tempranillo grape. Besides, it gives us both the structure and concentration to be able to obtain an oak aging, and it conserves well in bottles, on our wine racks, and at home. Here's the typical profile of the soil found in the Rioja Alavesa region. As I've already said, the soil is high in clay and limestone, with different clay layers clearly set apart from the others. This clay is one of the most valuable commodities in the region. Firstly, because of its impressive capacity to retain water. The frequent winter rainfalls encourages this retention. The clay swells and stocks the water. One of the particularities of clay is that it releases the water very slowly, which benefits the vine. In fact, when the heat in the hot summer arrives, the clay can still retain water, thus allowing the plant to survive. So the roots penetrate the clay in search of water. And as you can see, another characteristic of this clay is its whiteness. It contains a rather high level of lime, and that's the mineral that the plant, the vine, and the Tempranillo grape will draw up. This freshness and menthol note that can be found in both the young and the aged wines is due to the 12 to 15 percent of active lime in the soil. I have a soft spot for the Remilluri estate, which was a former monastery. This place is known to the Spanish as the Piage place, and it is absolutely wonderful. The estate is owned by the Rodriguez family and is currently being run by the well-known Tilmo Rodriguez, who has just succeeded his father. As well as being the owner of Remilluri, he is also a nationally an internationally renowned wine expert. He studied in Bordeaux and speaks perfect French. He is steeped in the French Bordeaux culture, but at the same time understands his Spanish land completely, having been born and raised there. His father bought the Remilluri estate. In the beginning, his father and he had a falling out, so he left to create other estates in Rioja. He founded an estate and has wines all over Spain that he has vinified himself. He kept all the other estates in Spain, but came back to Remilluri, where he is currently carrying out a revolution on the estate. The wines were already very good, 
considered great classics, but now he is adding to the classism of his father with a touch of modernity, which gives, and I have tried it personally, a concentrated wine with more personality, while preserving the Rioja identity, which is very important. Temperatures fluctuate dramatically in the extreme seasons of the year, and there is a striking contrast between winter and summer. Our region is more influenced by an aggressive continental climate. For example, in winter, the temperature can drop as low as zero degrees, never climbing higher than five degrees centigrade. We also know periods of severe frost, sometimes three or four in a winter, as well as the Bora winds that come at that time of year. However, in summer, there are two or three months where the temperature easily reached 35 degrees at noon. It is clear that the temperature here is both extreme and continental. Marquise de Riscal is the traditional Spanish bodega or estate. I admire them because even if it is an estate that produces millions of bottles, I always find the quality is of a certain standard for quite reasonable prices. It's a very old estate that was already present at the time of the phylloxera plague. It saw the arrival of estate owners from Bordeaux. Marquis de Riscal has splendid vineyards, with just a touch of Cabernet Sauvignon. They currently have, unlike other classic estates, the dispension to include Cabernet Sauvignon in the blend, due to a historical inclusion of the grape, which gives the wines from Marquise de Riscal a certain body and potency. Even if their Cabernet Sauvignon is of a low yield, it allows a resistance to mass cultivation. Marquise de Riscal has also experimented with lean wines wines and dry wine. At the moment, the winery estate is considered qualitative. The Ebro River flows from west to east through the valley of Rioja. The two mountain ranges have a moderating effect on the climate. We have a Mediterranean climate with a continental influence. But the Cantabrian mountains in the north protect us from the cold of winter. Here, in the north of Spain, the Alvin Mountains protect us from the summer heat. We have an Atlantic climate, which comes from the northwest, from the Cantabrian mountains, which means that the summers are tolerable and not too hot. The winters are good with mild temperatures, besides some frost in December, January, and February. We find ourselves in the north of the Val de Ginés grapevines, north of the main vineyards, opposite another one called La Poza. The particularity of these two vineyards is that even though they produce independently of each other, there is really only one difference that distinguishes them. The Val de Ginés is oriented towards the sun at midday, while the other, La Poza, is oriented in the afternoon. So one receives the sun's rays in the morning and the other in the afternoon. This simple difference in position yields two completely different wines, 
The grapevines, those of the morning, produces a fresher, fruitier wine with a red fruit aroma and an elegant and very delicate tannin, while the other, La Posa, produces a more refined and mature wine that heightens the hints of red fruit. Here we are at Lagardia, at the heart of Rioja Alavesa, and more precisely at the El Pison Vineyards. My grandfather planted this vineyard in 1945. He consecrated all his life to the running of this estate. Towards the end of his life, when he was 65 years old, he said, okay, the time has come now to pass on the torch. I will now resume and concentrate all of my experience into this family-owned vineyard. My grandfather lived through the phylloxera plague. In 1910, when he was only 22 years old, he took the initiative to do some grafting. So while all the vines in Spain, especially in La Rioja and at La Guardia, were being attacked by this plague, he was one of the first to graft a Spanish variety, such as the Tempranillo, onto an American vine. Después de 20 años trabajando en este en este en esta en esta línea, pues aquí en el pisón. After 20 years of work and vision, his trials paid off in his lifetime, right here at El Pison. His remedy was the 41B, a stock graft that was very new at the time, and the 161-49 for the upper parts. We call these vines Valita Alta because the air circulates here. These vines are very healthy, so we don't need to use aggressive treatments on them. In Rioja, we have registered indications of origin. We only make wines of controlled origins. The regulation means that we have to yield 6,500 kilograms per hectare. And that is what we have been doing here for more than 30 years. But for the top wines, instead of 6,500 kilograms, we yield 4,000 kilograms. We are a small production that uses highly concentrated grapes. When we make reserve wines, it is important to use a proportion of the old vines. The Tempranillo, for example, only finds its balance, its soft tannin, its roundness, and a significant quantity after 30 to 40 years. Here is an example of a 40-year-old Tempranillo vine stock, and as you can see, its shape is what we call the base. Our estate has vines that are a year old, as we are always planting and replanting vines, and some vines that are more than 100 years old, that already existed here or were brought from our neighbours. And we continually replant them to stop them from withering. A high percentage of the 110 hectares that we own is for the old wines. It's the grapes from the old vines that are used in making Grand Reserva wines. Every year, we must decide, depending on the behavior of the plots, which grapes will be used in the production of our three types of wine. We have the Grand Reserva, Reserva, and a wine called Lindes de Rumilluri, which is made from younger grapes and is less spectacular than the other vintages not forgetting the grapes that our neighbors sell us. Those are the three types of wine we make. We are in a Tempranillo vineyard, which is the typical variety of grape in La Rioja. 
95% of La Rioja is planted with this variety. The other varieties used are the Ganacha grapes, which are used mainly in Rioja Baya. The Graciano, which is native to Rioja, and to a lesser degree the Mazuelo grape, which exists in France as well as other parts of the world. The Tempranillo variety is widely used as the grape skin is loose, which allows for high quality. We are always looking for the small grains and small grapes to have a better maturation of the grape and a juice of better quality. On a Tempranillo grape, the grains are rather small. For us, this is ideal to make wines that are of a slight concentration, but where the fruity aroma is good. There are the aromas of red fruit and ripe blackberries. It is a grape that ages very well in oak and when bottled. The Tempranillo variety adds to the aging potential to the wine and can be conserved in bottles for years. We see here that it's very ripe. Mm, we can taste it. It has a good phenolic maturity. The particularity of this grape lies in the two limbs. The berries attach on the left and right of the main vine, which develops as it grows. This bunch isn't very old. The size depends on the age of the vines. The younger the vine, the bigger the size of the grape. But when the vine is 50, 60 or 70 years old, the grape contracts. However, the configuration of the limb stays the same. And this is what gives it its elegance, finesse, and its ripe fruity tannin. All in all, the elegance and finesse is due to the characteristics of the Tempranillo. Take a closer look at this Tempranillo grape from the Rimilluri estate. As you can see, like all the Tempranillo grapes from this bodega, what you notice first is the size of the grape that is incredibly small. This is actually the biggest in the cluster. This variety has grains reduced in size, which is a result of having planted vines in such poor and dry earth. What is of interest here is the slowing down of the maturation process. Notice how the peduncle is still really green when it should have turned red. So it's obviously not the time to start the grape harvest because the phenol hasn't yet matured and that is crucial. As you know, this variety has a pulp that is pallid and white and practically devoid of color. The little color it does have is found under the outer layer and as we can see, is far from reaching maturation point. We notice the beginnings of color pigmentation as well as aromas. It is now that the seed membranes macerate and continue to ripen in the interior and can't be removed. We analyze the grapes mid-August to determine the harvest date. We start by taking grape samples where we look at the pH, sugar and acidity levels as well as other organic acids. We also taste the grape, which is very important, in determining the ripeness of the sugar and the fennel. The harvest time in most of Rioja vineyards generally takes place at the end of September, beginning of October, and it lasts about a month.
The grapes arrive direct from the vines to the calf on the Cune estate in Aru. The grapes arrive in small 20 kilogram bins. We then store them here where the temperature is between 10 to 12 degrees. Then we do the first selection. We tip the bins out onto the mat and it takes several people to do the picking. Then we make a second sorting and select the grapes that will go into the stainless steel vat. We sort through them twice. First, we sort through the grapes in the first part of the cellar, and then we pick the best quality grapes that will be used for Marques de Riscal's top-of-the-range wines. The fermentation period takes on average seven days. But you also have to consider the pre-fermentation period, which comes before, where the grapes are macerated in their must, which lasts around five days. So in total, it takes 15 to 17 days for fermentation. During this period, carbon dioxide is released, forming a vinification with all the grape skins. From there, the must is pumped into a stainless steel vat, as you've just seen, and there it is left to ferment, allowing the extraction of color, tannin and aromas found in the grape skins. In this process, the sugar is converted into ethanol. The more sugar there is in the must, the denser it is. This density is then tested, and as we just saw, this had been reduced from 1,100 to 991 to 992. According to the density present, we can tell if the fermentation process is in the initial, middle, or final stage. During the fermentation period, we hardly need to crush the ripe grapes, as they easily release their color and tannin. In fact, we prefer not to crush the grapes in order to respect the finesse of the harvest. One of the characteristics of the Marques de Riscal is that we sacrifice the structure of the wine instead of the finesse. We prefer to have fine wines that are easy to drink than wines that are too structured. <laughs> Here at the Artadi estate we have 85 hectares which have been divided into 56 plots and then subdivided into 20 to 22 different production zones. We then put the harvest from each production zone into different vats. And that's how we can offer 22 different wines, which come from 22 distinctly different zones. Here, for example, we have a product that comes from the Castellone zone, which corresponds to the precocious inland zone in Rioja Alavesa.
The choice of the different vats used in fermentation depends on the terroir where the grapes were cultivated. For example, the more qualitative the plot of land, the more potential and personality it would have, thus enabling it to be used in the Grand Reserva wines. These normally are aged in oak barrels such as these. When it comes to Reserva or Crianza wines, the procedure is more conventional and less rigid and carried out in stainless steel vats. Here we have eight stainless steel vats and as I explained, we don't treat the young vineyards the same as the older ones. We harvest them separately and vinify them in different vats. The younger harvest is placed in the stainless steel vats, where they are pressed every day and the temperature is monitored closely, as we do with the older harvests. It is often said that the wine aged in oak barrels is better than the wine placed in stainless steel vats. It is while we do our daily tastings at the end of the fermentation period that we can see if there is enough tannin present and if there is a nice colour to it. Then we pour it into barrels where malolactic fermentation takes place. The Reserva and Grand Reserva wines are placed in both French or American oak barrels for blending purposes. The Crianza wines are aged in American oak because it has a pronounced vanilla and coconut flavor, which appeals to the consumers. People are accustomed to the flavor of American oak in the Crianza and in Rihoa wines generally. But for the wines that are destined for Reserva or Grand Reserva, we use French oak, which adds more complexity to the flavor. The wines have a spicy aspect and a more complex aroma. The wine then continues to age in the bottle. We also use American oak, but find that French oak actually adds more complexity. We then blend according to the different wines and according to what we are looking for. The method of aging that is used on our estate, and in La Rioja in general, started in the middle of the 19th century, when the Marquis de Riscal returned from living in Bordeaux. He brought back with him Jean Pinot, who was a master winemaker at the Lannesan Chateau. He showed a different method of winemaking that had never been used before. Before wine was made by using whole clusters of grapes, and it was not aged in barrels. From then on, the fermentation was carried out as it is today and is aged in oak as it is done in Bordeaux for one, two, or even three years, depending on the wine. We are in the cellar where we age the wine. This is where it always takes place. For the Crianza wines, the casks are in piles of five, which does make it difficult for decanting and for tasting. We have between 500 and 600 casks. We have organized the cellar so that there is a pile for the Reserva, the Grand Reserva, and another for the Imperial wines.
Like that, we can taste what each barrel has to offer because the French and American barrels have different qualities. After the alcoholic fermentation, the wines are brought here where the malolactic process occurs. We always use new barrels in the first year for the imperial wine, and then it is put into different barrels in the second year. For the first year, we use new barrels from different French and American suppliers, where we then do taste tests. Wines from different plots are separated into different barrels. After pouring, the vines and fermentation vats are placed in the barrels. We then taste from every wine and from every oak barrel before the blending. After the malolactic fermentation period, which lasts two months, we then rack and barrel it. The Reserva wines are aged for at least two years. We rack the wine every four to six months, depending on whether it needs more airing or not. The Grand Reserva wines are aged between 28 and 32 months. It is important to maintain the fruity tempranillo flavor because it is this grape variety that makes it so distinct. The aging process is long. It is not always done in new barrels because we want the tannin and the complexity of aromas without having the woody taste of the barrels. The decision to prolong or end the aging process is made by a simple tasting, which tells us when the time is right. This is where the wine is bottled. Firstly, the wine is clarified before reaching the stage. The first machine washes the bottle. The second puts the wine in, and the third corks the bottle. Then the bottles continue to be processed till they are put in bottle racks. Once the rack is full, the bottle is kept in a vertical position for 24 to 48 hours to give the cork time to dilate so that it is a perfect fit with the neck of the bottle. Once done, we turn the bottles over, pivot them, and store them in these two racks. Concerning the time that the bottles remain on the racks depends on the wine. The Reserva Marquis de Riscal will remain for a minimum of one year in the bottle before being put on the market. In the case of a Gran Reserva, it will be a minimum of two years. And when it comes to the top of the range Baron de Chirel wine that remains in the bottle for one year. We're speaking about the production of 6 million bottles per year. 
which is quite a lot. And we, we can find Kune all over the world in more than 40 countries. Okay? It used to be a very national target. People from Spain used to demand the, the wine. But nowadays we can fight in, in, in all over the world in 40 countries. We can speak about main other countries okay, who want Kune. We can speak about United Kingdom. We can speak about Switzerland, which is the first one. We'll speak about Asia, we're going now. It's very important, the Mexican country and also the United States. We also have here a library of all the vintages produced, which is a witness to our history and the history of Artadi. We keep around 20, 30 or 40 cases of each vintage so that we can follow the evolution of the wine, which makes up our history. Ver la evolución, disfrutar del vino y, y bueno, y tener una pequeña historia. As we are in a cemetery, we can find different kind of bottles resting here. And I'll tell you the story of this particular wine, okay, specifically. And we can find the wine that was served on the royal wedding between Prince Philip and, and Leticia, because they asked La Rioja, the control border, for a special wine for the dinner, and they just uh, decided that Imperial 1994 was the special one between a, a long group, okay, a list of 91 Rioja wines, at last, they decided to serve with Imperial 1994 on the royal wedding. So this is a, a matter of pride for us to be on the on the table of the royal wedding. And the rest of the of the bottles, we can see resting on here on the cemetery. The other kind of the bottles were drank by by all the aristocracy and the, and the royal family. Let's finish with our Vina El Pison. This wine comes from one vineyard which was planted by my great-grandfather in 1945. We cultivate and improve on it and bottle it in the memory of my great-grandfather. It's important to know that the difference between uh, Cune in Aro and Viña Real in Rio Jalavesa, okay, it's also reflected on the bottles. Why? Because Cune is a Rioja Alta, the water is more Atlantic, looks or pretends to be more similar to the uh, Bordeaux region. Okay? And if we have a look to the bottle, we'll find the shape of the uh, Bordeaux bottles as uh, usually. On the other side, Viña Real seems to be more similar okay, or the activity looks more similar to Borgoña. So what the reason we'll find in this case is the vino de autor, okay, the offer of, of Viña Real, the winery in Rio Jalavesa, and we'll see that the shapes is the same as Borgoña ones. Okay, so Cune Aro looks to be like Bordeaux, and, and Rio Jalavesa, in, in our case, Viña Real is a Borgoña option one. I detect in this wine important characteristics of this vineyard and this estate, most notably the aroma and flavor of the wild rustic mountains that we find here. The one visited earlier, it's an interesting quality in this wine that I appreciate greatly. This wine transmits the identity of this special land in the heart of Rioja. There are the sensations of mountains, of freshness, 
of rosemary, which transcend through the Tempranillo, Garnacha, and Mazuela grapes. This wine is very full, very fine, and above all, very fresh. We at the Marques de Riscal expect the wine to always have a freshness. We think that this freshness is its main quality. It is this freshness that invites people to drink one glass followed by another. To have this freshness, we have to harvest as early as possible in order to conserve the natural acid found in the grapes. That is why there is such a good balance between the American oak used and the conservation of all the virtues of the variety of grapes used. The Tempranillo grape expresses itself with excellence and power. This five-year-old wine is so fresh that you would say it is only two or three years old. These are the wines that can age for a longer time. This wine has, for example, the taste of the minerals in the soil. It's deeply nuanced. We can detect the depths of the roots, and with it, the intensity of minerals, limestone, slates, and chalk. And now we have the first sensation of fruit. Then the taste of the fruit is replaced, leaving room for the taste of the minerals. This then merges into nuanced chocolate and vanilla flavors. Oh, this is a very expressive wine. A wine of this high quality constantly expresses itself by an explosion of color and sensation. Every minute, every second minute, every five minutes, the wine tells a different story. It starts off in a contained way and then enters a depth, an authenticity and a more personal sensation that only this wine offers in its own intimate way. Mm-hmm. 